Without wasting much of our time, I have the honor and privilege. Media, can you please kindly introduce our next guest speaker? Thank you. Apostle Joshua Selma Nimak is the president of Eternity Network International, an interdenominational apostolic ministry which started out in Zaria, Kaduna State but is now based in the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja, Nigeria. Motivated by his deep love for the body of Christ, Apostle Selma regularly teaches believers across various denominations with unusual insight into God's word, and his ministrations are marked with awesome manifestations of God's power. He is the host of Koinonia, a weekly program that attracts thousands of people desiring to experience worship, word, miracles, love, and true intimacy with the Holy Spirit deepening their fellowship with God and preparing them to fulfill their divine destiny. A mentor and father to many, Apostle Selma is fondly loved and regarded by thousands of young adults across the nation and beyond as a model and icon of the next generation. With Jesus' joy in our heart, shall we make welcome Apostle Joshua Selma Nima. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you again for this opportunity to bring the word of God. It is always a privilege to be part of what God is doing. And I learned very early in life that the greatest investment you can make is not in real estate. The greatest investment you can make is not in stocks and shares the greatest investment you can make is not even just in a career the greatest investment is the ability to be part of the destiny of people that is a real investment that lasts <laughs> hallelujah so every time god gives me the privilege to be part of a destiny i take it with every sense of sacredness and every sense of responsibility and like i said yesterday um it is you see those who are there their destiny has already been revealed but those who are rising nobody knows what they will become praise the name of the lord the bible says now are we the sons of god and it doth not yet appear and so we must be able to invest in the destinies we see rising because nobody knows who and who is seated here the prophets, the apostles, the business people, the captains of industry, the politicians, heads of governments that are seated here. And believe me when I tell you that it's with every sense of joy and honor that we bring the word of God. I understand that you've had a number of sessions. Um, I heard a few of them from where I was and I was so blessed and edified that um, you are exposed to these kinds and these levels of truth. The truth of the matter is that what you hear is what makes you. What you hear is what builds you. The voice that you submit your mind and your spirit to is what shapes your destiny. And I hope you are not tired of the word of God because this is a camp meeting. That means that you came primarily to be exposed to the force of the word to be inspired, to be imparted, so that you can be sent like the foxes of Samson, back to consume everything that is not of God. I know that physically speaking, this will be draining because you have a lot to do. Some of you may probably be hungry, you may be tired. But let me tell you, this is a track record. You are paying a price now. Tomorrow, when you see what you become, you won't tell lies and say you don't know how it happened. You will just say God be glorified. But you know there is a story that is behind your glory. Are we together? So all of us together, let's lift up our hands to the God of heaven. And ask him one more time to bless us with his word. We remain students in the school of the spirit. We remain broken and humbled. We tremble at your word, O King of Zion.
Shena sala sabra haski de belendo shia lakata. Sige de beleketo sabranda gada parusiata. Make our destiny so God. Build our spirits. Give us power. Give us stature with God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. One of the things that I'm praying and hoping you will learn in this campground is the power of giving God time. The Bible says, He that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life eternal. If you give God time, He will give you His presence. If you give God time, he will give you his power. If you give God time, he will give you his wisdom. If you give God time, he will give you his honor. The seed for all of this is your time, your attention, your everything. You've heard me say the price for all of God is all of you, not part of you. Most of the fathers that you celebrate now, some of them have joined the cloud of witnesses some of them are still alive most of them will tell you that in their walk with god they gave god time one of the things that the devil is cheating us in as a generation is that we scarcely give god time and yet we expect the results of those who gave him time there were people who met like this like you are sitting every day for three months every day for six months you have that in your history even in the west here there are prayer mountains and campgrounds all around your region with a history of men who labor day and night praying some of you even come from the bloodline physical bloodline of those people there is no excuse to remain small there is no excuse to remain powerless one more time if you are not tired father change my life visit me in a very dramatic way there is a generation at the mercy of my spiritual seriousness there is a generation at the mercy of my passion my hunger my drive hallelujah the last thing i'll do before we sit down it will be a brief session this afternoon i think let me use the opportunity and do it now is to sincerely without any sense of um, being political or just being right i think we owe four square as a ministry a lot of gratitude for having the discernment to invest very constructively in the youths. I really think so. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, when you study revivals and you study modern history, one of the mistakes that the fathers made, and I think this is a lesson for all of us to learn. We're not saying it to condemn them. They did their best. But one of the mistakes was that when satan saw that then the western world he saw that some of these people were focused there was no possibility of backsliding one of the things he did was to give up on that generation and while they were in the crusades raising people from wheelchairs they were in the crusades praying and fasting they did not pay attention to their children the devil deceived them to be so forward thinking they forgot that one day they would die they forgot that one day they will go. All it takes to destroy what you have done is one generation of neglect. Just one generation of neglect. And you can zero down on all your sacrifice for many years. When you read modern history, you will think they are lying. When they tell you the people who stepped upon the soils of the western world, the things they did, you will marvel and wonder why the level of decadence today. The devil has always used this strategy. This is why we are celebrating this ministry. Do you know why? 
because the fathers, the mothers were prayer warriors. Some of them were not educated, but my goodness, they would turn every plate upside down and pray and fast. They had encounters with Jesus. But Satan knew that he may not be able to make these people live the things of God. Please help those under the anointing. Just pay attention. And then what he did was to come to the little children, the ones they were calling babies, the ones they were calling teenagers. Oh, don't mind them. They are little children. They don't pray. Don't worry. One day we'll teach them. They don't fast. Or they are too young to fast. And then what happened was that Satan now went and started growing with that generation. He introduced what became their focus. Let me tell you, whoever grows with you is the one you become loyal to. Nobody will show up one day and expect a generation to be loyal to you if you did not grow up with them. Are we together now? Those babies today are the presidents of nations. Those babies today are the captains of industry. So Satan was patient for about 30 years and grew with them. Now all the people who could stand for God have transited in glory. And now there is a generation that did not know God. Let me tell you this. No matter how impactful you are, you are a failure if the generation behind you does not become an amplification of what God gave you. The real legacy is not your signs and wonders. The real legacy, no matter what the miracles are. I'm speaking to some of you because some of you are students, you're on campus. Some of you are about to graduate. Have you seen this happen in the campus? That there will be a set of people who are on fire. They love God, they are praying. Then the devil will make them to focus on their personal achievement and forget about a transference of graces. They won't mentor the ones coming. They won't build anybody. Empire mentality makes them to keep enjoying. The moment they graduate, you will suddenly find two or three years with no one who is spiritual. And it brings the fire on that campus back to zero. Occultism will now grow again. Drugs will now grow again. Until God now begins to painstakingly and pick young men from 100 level, 200 level. Then he will now build a team again. Then they will forget to pass the baton. The real measure of a man's success is not your personal achievement. Your personal achievement gives you the credibility to be listened to, the credibility to be received. But your real legacy, let me tell you my brothers and my sisters, your real legacy is what happens after you leave that phase of life. As young as we look, if we focus on ourselves and we continue a local champion mentality, a few decades from now will make the mistakes that others have made too and while you are celebrating joshua selman if all that happens is joshua selman if christ tarries one day whether we like it or not we will also join them among the clouds of witnesses but what we leave behind look what jesus did jesus said look i'm only here for three and a half years left and he said there's no time for celebrity 12 where are you every day mentorship fire teaching opening them to the things of god mentored 72 send them for their spiritual it they return back and say wow even the demons hey no time for celebration let's go back to the class there is a lot to be done when jesus died when he resurrected if i were jesus i would go to herod and say just to let you know that i am really jesus he didn't have time for that as soon as he resurrected he said where are you 120 we have lecture we have i have 40 more days before the holy ghost comes and there are some things i've not taught you my curriculum is not finished yet sit down and learn so every opportunity you have don't let the devil deceive you that you are young the child of yesterday is the king of tomorrow. The young man of yesterday is the elder of today. Time is mysteriously deceptive. Everyone seated here for those who are not students. One day they were on campus. One day they were young people. You will open your eyes and see that you are now a grandfather. You will open your eyes and see that you are now a grandmother. Unfortunately, you may not be able to reverse time. 
So whatever you do now, you are not doing it for yourself. While you are tired here, remember your children, whether you have them or not. Remember them. I'm standing for my children. I'm standing for my family of 30 people with nobody on fire. I'm standing as that altar, the one who is representing the purposes of God. Are we together? Let me tell you this. One of the indices that I use as a measure to communicate profound honor and regard to a person and a ministry is the ability to forget about themselves and their personal achievements and look at the generation coming. It is selfish to focus on all the crowns and everything. No matter how anointed we are, we will not always be at this level. As footballers, once upon a time, there were names in this country when you call goalkeepers, footballers. Are we together? I'm not looking down on them. But the reality of life is that time, everything is a measure of time. Today, it is Joshua Selman standing here. No matter how anointed I am, just like our fathers of faith, a day will come, we will focus on the generation we're sent to. It is not every generation we're sent to. Where you are sitting now, a day will come, you will not sit there again. It will be someone else. Maybe your children who will sit. And if Joshua Selman and Co. did not do a good job, they will be seated, but there will be no preacher. We will still be alive preaching to the generation that we are sent to. And David served God in his own generation. May it never be that our children will not have voices that still direct them. Can we pray for the generations coming? Don't say you are too young. I don't know why God decided to take us this way. But lift your voice and pray. Think generational. Pray for your campus. Lord, I will not graduate the way I met things. I came and I met cultism. I came and I met decadence. Grant me the grace to raise people who will continue the works of righteousness and power. Some of you are done. Some of you have businesses. Some of you have younger ones. You have siblings. Grace for legacy. Grace for legacy. Don't be tired. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let me encourage, let me encourage the coordinators of the Students' Congress and the rest. Among the many things that is taught the people, they should be taught the principles of succession. Succession is not something that happens without being taught. Succession is the secret of continuity. The things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, commit thou to faithful men who will commit them to others. The Christianity we receive today is because people brought it and they were good at succession. No matter how successful you are, if you do not understand succession, there will be no continuity to your impact. This is one of the secrets of the Jews. You go to Israel today, they have mastered succession. Corporately speaking, you go to the West. From a secular standpoint, they got it well. You will see restaurants that are 130 years old. You go to Europe, you will see buildings that are almost 300 years old. Succession. But in our nation, sadly, and in many parts of our continent, there is hardly second or third generation of anything. A father will labor and do everything, build business, serve God, sponsor missionaries, only for the man to die because he did well, but he did not think of the children. And there will come a very irresponsible child who in five years will destroy the legacy of almost half a decade. Hello, Kim Madonna. Hello, Kim Madonna. Hello, him, Madonna. Hello, him, Madonna.
Help us, Spirit of the living God. Within the minutes that we have to share the word, grant us grace. In Jesus' name. Please be seated. I believe that this was a word from God to us all. Always think transgenerationally. Always think in terms of succession. You are a failure until there are at least two people of your kind you have reproduced at any level in life. It's not till you die. If you can leave two of your kind in your campus as you are going, you are successful. Even in agriculture, they say for every one tree you cut, plant, how many days? Plant two. Praise the name of the Lord. Yesterday, we began to examine Jesus from the scripture that says, looking up to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And I did tell us that primarily our focus as far as transformation and conformity is concerned is to the degree to which we are able to see Jesus and learn of him. He says, take my yoke and learn of me for I am meek and I am lowly. Praise the name of the Lord. I told us that while it is good to have models, human and physical models, the best of us still falls short of the standard that gives the picture of Christ in his wholeness. Why? Because we are humans. Why? Because we are limited. So in spite of all of the things that we attempt to do to be worthy models, the greatest model that is worth our emulation and worth our pursuit is Jesus. He is the benchmark, the reference, he is perfect theology. Are we together? And yesterday we began to examine the attributes that were in Jesus that made him such a wonder-working personality as far as his earth work was concerned. And number one, we examine humility. Are we still together? We looked at the quality of humility, that one of the classic signs that you are conforming to the image and the character of the Christ in experience is humility. I shared with us a few principles that help us to walk in humility. Then we looked at love and compassion, not just love for God, but love for men. The ability to be touched with people's the feelings of their infirmity. Um, praise the Lord. The third thing we'll be looking at um, that is worthy of emulating in the life of Jesus is his prayer ministry. The Bible lets us know that Jesus himself was a man of prayer. Even though he was 100% God, he was 100% human. And the Bible says, for we do not have a high priest who had not been touched with the feelings of our infirmity. He said he was in every way like us, tempted yet without sin. That means we must carefully examine his life. What was the secret behind his dexterity, even though he was human? What was the secret behind his consistency until he finished well? Among the many truths that we find in scripture that sponsored the strength and the stamina of Jesus while he walked upon the earth was the efficiency of his prayer ministry. Are we together? Now, theologically speaking and historically speaking, Jesus was born at a time that there was such warfare around his birth. Because of Jesus' birth, many innocent children died. Are you aware of that? Jesus almost never had age mates because they killed all of his age mates, literally. Imagine like coming to a city like this or a nation and killing all of your age mates. It was a difficult upbringing for him. But then the Bible lets us know that every once and again we saw Jesus engaging in the ministry of prayer. So I'd like us to examine the prayer ministry for a few minutes so that we can rise to the level and the standard in the spirit, the standard of stature that will help us to be worthy representations of the kingdom and of the Christ. It's one thing to desire to walk in holiness. 
It's one thing to desire to walk in righteousness. It's one thing to desire to walk in power. It's one thing to desire to walk in wisdom. But it takes more than desire. There is in this kingdom, we never do anything in the strength of the flesh. To desire is only human. But there is an engracing of the spirit. Please listen carefully. In this kingdom, the effort of the flesh will only end men in futility. You will desire, you will will to do it. But if the grace that picks you up to that level in the spirit is not there, you will consistently fall short of your expectation. Is God speaking to us? Many of us desire even an arm robber when you ask him. Or maybe when you meet someone who smokes or drinks and you sit with him and say, look the kind of life you are living. Are you really happy about this? In all honesty, sometimes some of you, you have them around and they will tell you sincerely, I, I don't like this kind of life. Is that true? And whilst you talk to them, you will think they have repented. They will never do anything again because of the level of brokenness. One day later, they are in the police station again. Because in this kingdom, look up please. Let me teach you. Pay attention to what I'm teaching you this afternoon. In this kingdom, demons are real. In, in this kingdom, Satan is real. There is a real devil that has vowed to see that your life will never rise to God's expectation. Spirits are real. Wickedness is real. The Bible does not leave us in the dark as to the fact that there are forces and that not every force is godly. There are spirits that will fight to see that your prayer life never becomes anything to write home about. There are spirits that will fight to see that the prophecy upon your head from birth never comes to be fulfilled. Oh, when you were giving birth to a prophet came and said, this lady is going to be like Esther in the palace. And you are not the only one who had the prophecy. Those spirits also had it. And they vow and covenant that for as long as we are here, this lady will not rise as a light in this family. Please listen to me. No matter how modern we are, no matter how advanced we are, no matter how educated and how technological we get, the reality that is in the realm of the spirit is that dark powers are real and they are not sleeping, they are not folding their arms. The Bible says Satan moves to and fro. Is it in your Bible? Like a roaring lion seeking for whom he may devour. There are over seven point something billion people on earth and you will be surprised how many people are under the siege of Satan. Spirits are behind the tragedies in the life of men. I once had a story very many years ago of a young man who did well, finished school, collected his certificate. I think he was on a bike going home. And one of these trucks that carry products just came with speed and crushed that person even climbed the neck he died there and then and that was the only one who was rising in that family don't tell me it was a coincidence spirits are real what of people who read and even conduct tutorial for others and then when it's time for exam they sit down there as if they've never read until they fail they are taking their bath in the night they now remember the answers wickedness is real oh Please listen to me when I tell you this. Our world is immersed in a web of evil and wickedness. And the Bible knowing this made a provision for the saints to be able to navigate through the tides of evil, navigate through the tides of wickedness, of witchcraft, and all of these orchestrations ultimately the victory comes through the sacrifice of christ but the administration of that victory requires engaging the forces of the kingdom let me repeat myself that even though the victory is finished in christ as far as the bible tells us the administration of that victory in your life here and now will be predicated on your understanding and engaging the forces of the kingdom. Just because the victory has been won, 
does not mean it will automatically be made manifest in your life forever oh lord it says your word is settled in heaven not in your life it takes engaging the forces of victory that have been given to the saints and one of it is the ministry of prayer do you know what it means to grow in a place where you know they hate you from the king there herod did not hide his own go and search for that child that i will come and worship him and he was negotiating so that they will kill him to the point that the angels joseph god used dreams he used angels to hide jesus when herod died he said now you can go the one who seeks your child is gone do you know what it means to walk in a world where you suspect that anybody can kill you at any time your life and your ministry is not received and yet jesus was able to rise to that standard and he finished strong that means there is something that we need to learn walk with me for a few minutes as we explore a few principles that can help us rise to that stature through the ministry of prayer number one the bible lets us know matthew chapter 10 and verse 16 please give it to us matthew chapter 10 please write it down matthew chapter 10 and verse 16 behold i send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves very interesting information jesus is talking now not a prophet not an archangel i send you let me define for you the territory that i'm sending you to you are an innocent sheep you see a sheep does not have horns a sheep does not have a system of defense the only system of defense of a sheep is his shepherd so he's saying i send you as sheep but a wolf and a sheep does not lie down in the same place when a wolf sees a sheep the assignment is to tear it into pieces and eat it and yet the god of all flesh sends us as sheep among wolves that means the tendency to see your destiny go down as far as this world is concerned is 100 percent the tendency to see that although you rise you never amount to anything is 100 percent the tendency to see that tears and sorrow never depart from your life is 100 percent the devil is that determined and god did not leave us in the dark he says therefore on account of this information be as wise as serpents one of the few times in scripture where god will recommend people to learn the wisdom of the serpent and to be as harmless as doves first john chapter 5 and verse 19. first john chapter 5 apostle john was giving us another information about the world that we live in if you can see it projected please read otherwise i read it for you and we know that we are of god uh-huh and the whole world the bible says lieth in wickedness the whole world means abel kuta means lagos means kano means maiduguri means america means europe means asia the entire world is immersed in wickedness the bible says very instructive information one more scripture matthew chapter 26 and verse 41 again jesus christ the son of the living god matthew 26 41 are we there it says watch and pray jesus again is giving us an instruction watch the word watch there means be discerning the word watch there means be vigilant the word watch there means be wise the word watch there means be courageous watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation why because there is a weakness in all men it says the spirit is willing 
willing to be successful willing to be great willing to serve god willing to live a fruitful life but the limitation is that the flesh is weak the flesh is weak look up please the flesh is weak does not necessarily talk about sin alone listen to what i'm telling you it is a limitation that is in all humans that by reason of wearing a mortal body there is only so much we can do are we together now there are times that you know you should pray the holy ghost is telling you arise and pray but the reality of your tiredness you know you are tired for a legitimate reason the flesh is weak there are times that you know you should serve god but this joblessness is now 10 years no job and the truth is that as people begin to mock you and talk against you at first you say it does not matter the flesh is weak this subject of flesh is something we have to trust god for grace and examine and deal with seriously most believers focus just on the issue of sin the issue of sin has been resolved through the substitutionary sacrifice of christ that you can obtain that grace and that righteousness and the grace grants you the ability to walk sincerely in true holiness and righteousness the bible says but for flesh it says i crucify it daily not monthly not weekly listen carefully you can be as righteous as you can but the reality of the weakness of your flesh you will find out your prayer life is going down your word life is going down your passion and your zeal for spiritual things going down by the time you stay 10 years with no child and everybody say you claim to be a christian even unbelievers who live their wayward life they have children and their children are almost going to secondary school don't tell me it will not touch you by the time you love god and you've served god in church for years and someone comes to say what is the benefit of your serving god your colleagues who were not serious with god when you were serving god some of them were unbelievers today they have jobs today they build their house there is nothing that seems to show like the faithfulness of god the reality of those statements can get you to a point where even if you lock yourself to in the place of prayer you will think you are praying but you are just worrying saying but god are these people really lying have I not spent my life serving you? Is this how you reward them who serve you? You need strength in your inner man. The Bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle, your strength is small. Can I tell you this? Every one of us seated and listening to me here and those who might be following online, for as long as you are alive enough on this earth a day will come when the reality of life will hit you to a point that if you do not have sufficient spiritual arsenal to stand in strength you may fall by the wayside even after many years of serving god most of you here you still receive support from loved ones and parents whether you sow or not there's a harvest coming so you may not understand the implication of what it means to be exposed to a wicked world where someone vows and says, I am the boss in this office. It is over my dead body that you rise. Yet you are the one, the brain behind the growth of the company. The whole world lieth in wickedness. What then was the spiritual strategy that Jesus used? Why did he become so victorious regardless Satan? Why did he become victorious regardless the naysayers, the scribes, the Pharisees? Why did he become successful regardless all the schemings of darkness? What technology did he employ to be able to still rise? and finish his assignment he said my meat is to do the will of him that has sent me and to finish it when he was on that cross hallelujah he said it is finished i finished it i fought the, the fight 
Paul, when at the end of his life, he said, I have, I have fought a good fight of faith. What a powerful testimony for a man to say, in spite of the wickedness of men, I still finished. Lord, I have finished the blueprint of my assignment. You stand and look at earth. I remember when Billy Graham was preparing to leave. One of the few men who finished his assignment, there was nothing else for him to do. He just sat down and was waiting for the day the Lord would take him. And with glory and honor, he transited. Look at Jesus. He finished his assignment, raised those to succeed him, and levitated in their presence to heaven. And while they watched in fear, the angels came and said, Why do you look up? This same Jesus you see, he's going to come back again. The same way you have seen him go up. There are many ways, listen carefully, that God helps men. The Bible says, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? That was a question. Then it says, my help cometh from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Let me show you one of the ways that God helps us in this kingdom, regardless the arsenals of darkness. When you find this secret that I teach you this afternoon, you can guarantee that you will finish strong. You can guarantee that after 30 years, you will still be standing, serving the purposes of the kingdom. When all the dust rises and falls, you will still be standing and serving the purposes of the kingdom. Are we together? Romans 8, 26. Shila samrahaski dabakasu debrende gedibalahasya. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth. Likewise, this Holy Ghost that was given to us is more than a Pentecostal phenomenon. Likewise, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmity. The word translated infirmity there does not mean sickness. It means bodily limitation. The limitation that comes to you by reason of wearing a mortal body. That the Holy Ghost was sent to us because God knew that outside of him there is no chance of our survival. Not in this wicked world. Are we together? The Spirit helped our infirmity. What is the infirmity? We are limited. For we know not what we should pray for. As we ought but the spirit itself make it intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered next verse and he that searched the heart knoweth what is the mind of the spirit for he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God I do not know what challenges my family will face. I do not know what onslaughts of darkness will come against your life, your ministry, your career. But one thing you know is you can tap into the superior intelligence of the spirit who is not limited. Do not forget that from Genesis 1 verse 1, the Holy Spirit is master over chaos. Every time there is darkness, every time there is chaos, he's the, he's the dimension of the Godhead that is introduced. Are we together? The spirit helpeth our infirmities. How does he help it? by supplying you a dimension of a prayer language that even though you do not understand the bible lets you know that every time you utter that language there is a coordination you are praying with accuracy according to the will of god i may not even know what i need for the next level of my life I may not know what I need for the next level of ministry. I do not understand the kind of demonic structure that put themselves to come against me. But one thing I know is that even though I am limited as a human being, there is the supernatural spirit that was given to me and he's provided a mechanism that if I engage it, no matter my limitation, the Holy Ghost who sees this entire span of earth, he knows how to direct me to pray 
such that I will eventually imagine victory. Now, thanks be to God who causes us always to triumph. Jesus, your Jesus seemed very limited. That was why when he wore this human body before he started ministry, as soon as he was ready to start ministry, the first thing that happened was that he went to meet John the prophet, the Baptist. When John baptized him, listen, he had not preached any sermon. The heavens opened and the Holy Spirit came and descended upon him. And the next thing that happened was that he was driven to the wilderness. He prayed for 40 days, 40 nights. Satan came to tempt him and he defeated Satan with it is written. The Bible says he returned in the power of the spirit. Suddenly his fame went about. And when persecution arose for the word's sake, every time the Bible will say he will retreat from people and he will go to pray. Why should the son of the living God pray? There's no mention of him praying when he was in heaven before he came. But the moment he became a man, he had to pray. Luke 18 verse 1. Please learn this secret that I show you as we pray. Luke 18 verse 1. The Bible says, and he spake a parable to them to this end that men. Prayer is not for those in trouble. Prayer is not for prayer warriors. Prayer is not for ministers of the gospel. Prayer is for men. The moment you find out you are carrying a body, prayer is mandatory for your survival it is not something for those who want to go into ministry or those who think they want to walk in power no he spake a parable that men ought always to pray and not to faint so when the tiredness of his crusades come upon him when the discouragements that attempt to come from the scribes and pharisees he will retreat and pray and pray and pray and pray and return back with strength and fire and vigor the disciples did not know what was the secret of his consistency they were discouraged they will run away today they would argue among themselves do you know why they did not have a mechanism to draw strength until that time it was not yet given to them so discouragement was the order of the day there were all kinds of carnal things among them arguing for position who will sit at the left and right jesus when are you going to conquer caesar and herod and give us a share of this inheritance and said look how carnal you people are we are discussing kingdom matters and what you are thinking of is this to the point that they even got their mother james and john to come and help them negotiate the position in advance so that there's no argument when jesus becomes a victor they were arguing about who was the greatest. They were arguing about leadership. At a point in time, they now became angry and said, Master, we have left all. Oh, don't think we've forgotten it. We have left all to follow you. What is our stake in this? Because they were weak. That was the weakness of the flesh playing out. Even Jesus got to a point in Gethsemane when he was becoming sin. For the first time, the Holy Ghost was going to leave him. To continue his journey of his passion unassisted by the spirit of grace and he cried he cried and cried and cried father if it's possible take this cup off me that's to tell you the reality if jesus got to a point where he was weak do you know what i love about the bible it leaves everything bare it doesn't doctor anything and hide it if jesus cried it will write it there if Jesus was victorious, he would write it there. A time came, your Jesus, the son of the living God, was tired. And he said, Father, I never knew it was going to be this hard. Is it possible for us to renegotiate salvation? And then he just said, no, nevertheless, not my will. That's the strength to continue. But your will be done. You read about the disciples. Read about how most of them were killed and martyred. Some of them were turned upside down and they were hung. Some of them were hung in a transverse session. Some of them were fed to animals. And yet in modern history, even at the point of death, ah, 
the Holy Spirit. He can give you strength and courage beyond your imagination. That with this Holy Ghost, you can stand in front of the board and see two carryovers and say, but Lord, this was not the plan. And yet in the midst of it, you will still find strength and be comforting someone else. And they say, so how will you do with your life? Now he said, no problem. I know that all things work together for good. And they say, shouldn't you be crying? And while other people are saying, what a shame. You claim that you serve God all your life. Where is your God that could not help you? You say, no problem. I will pass through this with honor and nobility. I know that the one extra year, something is going to happen that will change my life. There is stamina when you understand the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Now, please listen to me. The subject of being filled with the Holy Ghost, with evidence of praying in tongues, is not a Pentecostal phenomenon. No, no, no. This is not something for Pentecostals. This is not something for men of God. It was an advantage that God gave believers. He says you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes. Acts chapter 1. In Acts chapter 2, we do not see power, but we see tongues. That means there is a relationship between tongues and spiritual power. If he said, he never said you shall receive tongues. In Acts chapter 1, you shall receive power. But in Acts chapter 2, now when the day of Pentecost was fully come, the Bible says, they were gathered together with one accord, in one accord. Suddenly, there was a sound, like it was in Ezekiel 37. It came and filled the whole room. And the Bible says they saw cloven tongues that were as of fire. It came and rested upon every one of them. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost, the Bible says, and they began. So there was a day, it was not their experience. They began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. When the people gathered in the day of Pentecost and said, Peter, what is happening? Peter said, this is that. This is that prophecy that one day in the last days it shall come to pass, I shall pour out my spirit. He began to quote from prophet Joel to tell him this is that experience that brings us strength. By the time we get to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, please give it to us. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 2. Paul was mentoring the church in Corinth. And here's what he had to say. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue, he said, speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him. How be it in the spirit, he speaketh what? mysteries and Paul said those mysteries is what he calls the hidden wisdom of God that none of these princes had known for had they known it they would not crucify the Lord of glory that when we pray in the spirit as scattered as what we are saying is he says in the realm of the spirit we are birthing realities we are praying mysteries verse 4 of the same scripture the Bible says he that speaketh in an unknown tongue watch this if you are trusting God to rise to that level of stature and stamina, one of the weapons that brought Jesus to that place, because the Bible says Jesus increased, meaning he too experienced transitions. He increased in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and with men. He said, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, builds up his capacity, that what was a weakness yesterday no longer becomes a weakness tomorrow. Show me a Christian who just gets born again, weak and timid, with all kinds of family yokes and causes to destroy him. Expose that person to a proper system of mentorship. Let that person come under a strong apostolic grace and prophetic grace. Let that person be filled with the Holy Ghost and be encouraged to build himself. I show you fire on his way to be ignited. No matter how weak and no matter how timid. You may start as a weak person, but just keep praying. One day becomes one week. One week becomes one month. Every night you go to pray. While you are praying, you are even tired yourself. 
Do you know what you are doing? You are attracting through your consistency the spirit of prayer and supplication. The Holy Ghost, that dimension of his ministry is being exposed to you. One night, it will do you like a dream. You will go to prayers before and a grace will fall on you. You will do a night vigil, only you there. From that day, no matter what happens, prayer will no longer be by your strength again. You have been carried by the wings of the Spirit. The grace for supplication is upon you. That your bodily weakness will no longer be able to swallow you up again. It is at that point, listen, all the other gifts of the spirit are activated by your consistency of praying in tongues. Believe me, this is my office. I know what I'm saying. All other gifts of the spirit, prophecy, word of knowledge, it is at the instance of your expanding your organs of interaction in the realm of the spirit. You build stamina. All of a sudden you sense something is wrong with mama i don't know why but i sense for two days now i've been sensing that all is not well you pick up a call and call home mommy are you fine she tells you how did you know i didn't want to tell you but it's like i've been down you tell her it is the devil now in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare that power be broken discernment many believers are dull of discernment the devil comes slowly and comes to destroy us. We do not have the seeing eye. We do not have the hearing ear. Do you know why? Because we have neglected this precious gift given to us. If this gift was useful to make Jesus the model that we now celebrate, without the Holy Ghost, let me tell you, even though he was the son of God, he never would have been able to survive it. The world is too evil to use just intellect and use strength. It is the ability to pray in the spirit that will give you strength. One year there's no money at home, yet you are praying. You hold the hands of your wife and say, let's pray. We know that God is faithful. We are completely confused. We don't know what to do. It's in the place of prayer direction will come. Five minutes becomes one hour. Can I encourage you? Let me tell you this. My dear people, now you are not as busy as you should. One thing with prayer is that truly there are prayer banks in the realm of the spirit. You can send incense of prayer to wait for your future there. I know this. I know what I'm saying. For some of you, you don't know why God is saying cut away from some of these nonsense activities and spend time to pray. A day will come when you are breastfeeding children. You may not have that time to pray the way you always wanted again. Everybody here who is working or busy will tell you that 10 years or 20 years ago, the liberty you had in terms of time, you don't have it now again. Are we together? Time. So now is the best time to invest in prayer. You find one corner every time you are praying. Why are you praying this kind of prayer? Lord, I know where you are taking me to. And I'm, I'm praying that prayer. Not just give me tea. Not just give me bread. This is prayer for edification. This is prayer for warfare. You are sending in prayer as an usher to wait for you in your future. That what killed my father will not kill me. What killed my loved ones. They rose up just like me. But a spirit stood and stopped them. I'm not going to allow that destroy my life. I saw it destroy their ministries. And I'm standing now to send an incense of prayer. This is more than just give me tea. This is more than morning devotion. Wake up Africa. There are real demons in our continent. It will take power to last in today's world. I remember the first time I saw a demon spirit in my life. I was praying. Hmm. Let me tell you this. The day you take prayer seriously, the realm of the spirit will start giving you a feedback. You will know that something you are doing is touching the realm of the spirit in reality. That night, it was at the back of a generator. I'm not talking of visions. 
physically like I'm looking at you. I'm praying and all of a sudden I go to the back of the generator and woo, here is this spirit standing and he tells me, get back. I didn't even know when subconsciously I started praying. From that day, the reality of the demonic realm, I had read about it, I had read it from scripture, but my eyes had seen it. I knew that this thing oh, is real. Except you are given to prayer, everything I'm saying remains as a parable. You will never on. There are dimensions in the spirit where one day you are praying, the blueprint of your family's destiny will be open. That's the day you will see that your loved ones were not supposed to be small. So this is why marriages don't happen in our family. So this is why people rise and God will say, Now that you have paid the price to build power with me, let me give you authority in the spirit to deal with that situation and now you begin to deal with that situation he spoke a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint listen don't you think if they fought your father and your mother they will leave you say unto God how terrible art thou in your ways through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves to you let me tell you this most of these songs you hear I'm not a musician most of the songs that you hear that have come from me were songs that came from the realm of the spirit sometimes I was praying and I was caught up in the realm of the spirit and I was hearing these songs of angels and the part I was able to bring is the part that you hear let the weight of your glory fall that's one of the songs let it cover all the earth let the weight of your glory fall let it cover all the earth let it cover all the earth let it cover all the earth. Songs. Holy, holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Lion of Judah, the Lamb upon the throne, we hail you, Most High. It was a song that I heard. I was in the realm of the spirit. And I heard that song. It was like worship was going on. You hail you. Most high. We hail you. We worship you. Listen to me. We are going to pray. One of my assignments this morning is to activate your prayer life again. Again. Genuine prayer, not this thing people are doing around. Genuine prayer that produces power with God and power in the spirit. I tell you this, take my word for it, that if God grants you grace and in this session, if you can obtain the grace and the fire, and you set that altar again on fire you will marvel and wonder your weaknesses will be swallowed up by the strength of God your limitation altars that will not let you rest altars that will not let you bow altars that will not allow you rise in the spirit will give way listen hear me please hear me if you have never prayed in your life 
let this be the time you will pray i will lead you into the prayer let me give you a piece of my secret place i'm going to pray with you this afternoon not laziness don't i'm not talking of the kind of prayer where you are looking around typing punching phones we're talking of a matter of destiny find a corner hold on to the four horns of the altar and everyone begin to pray in the spirit pray in the spirit generate power with god how can you walk when you don't know the way of the spirit how can you run when you don't know the way of the spirit how can you fly when you don't know the way of the wind this power at work in us changing everything swallow your pride tonight come to the school of the spirit don't you know in his hands are the keys to eternal life shelekete parakatos kotobrash shata takata pakata kata kata lakata skanda pratakas kotobakata where are the men of prayer where are the women of prayer shananantas kata bakata ekrakata pakato kotos kadaba ebratosko shetatalia embrekato kotobakoto shakate shimelakata rekete bakato kotobakata Shadadadabakata, Skata Kata Prakata Koto Sotapa, Embrakato Soto Prakate, Shilabakas Kabas Kotos Kotaskia, Embrakato Koto Pralakata, Shilas in the Alaskata, Ekrakata Tokoto, Nakata Prakata Lekate Katos, Skanamakato Koto Prakata Katalekata, Nakata Prakata Katalekata, Shigadegadegadebos, Embrakoto Sokoto Prakata Katalekata. Pray. Elaba sheda bara 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 bash. Shke bara taka tapenda kate peleka toso kotos. Kapran toko topra katosia. Likewise, the spirit help him. Likewise, the spirit help him. Skanta paranta skata perkate. Ekata pratos koto prakata rekato shikata. Kebrodo soto paruto soto prakate beletana. Pray. I know the lion. I know the lamb. I know the lion. I know the lamb. I believe in the lion. I believe in the lamb. I believe in the lion. I believe in the lion. And I will follow the lion. I follow the lion. I follow the lamb. I follow the lion. I follow the lamb. I follow the lion. Shanes kaparatos koto prakates. Eke parutos soto koto prakate balakata. Shila kate prakatos. Kebran dekata. Press to that escape velocity in the spirit. Em prakata kate parakato soto tosh. It's time to rise in power. It's time to rise. No more limitation. You are not weak, oh great one. You are not weak, oh great one. Rise up, contend, have power in the spirit. I love the lion. I love the lion. I love the lamb. I love the lion. I love the lion, say. 
I love to laugh. Sada kata prada ketos koto barika. Embrata ke baroto shoto prada tia. Strengthen my ministry. Strengthen my inner man. Power with God. Power in the spirit. Let the gifts of the spirit be activated within my life. In the name of Jesus, it's time to represent the purposes of God. To walk in signs, walk in wonders, walk in miracles. Don't be tired. You came for a camp meeting. Shamanda kapara kata sikete. Shekata prakata katotsia. Em prakata protos koto barikatea. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. Listen to me. Listen. In the name of Jesus. Now listen. Hear me. It said, blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance. Are you ready to pray? Say after me in the name of Jesus. You will marvel and wonder at what happens to you when you pray this prayer. Say, Father. I decree that every planting, every altar, every orchestration of darkness against my life, my family, my destiny, against prophecy over my life, right now, it comes under judgment. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Every handwriting, ordinance, Speakings. Neketele shala bakarian tekapa. Kata prakato sekata barekatash. Efrakato koto prakato sekete. Against my destiny, against my academics, against my spiritual growth. Ema na da 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 masia da 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 bara. Hela mana na Maria da basi da 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 da. Hela mana na 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 basi da 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 da. He na 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 de na de na de na de na de na de. Shela baruto sokoto prateke te baratu ziata. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We soon round up. My glory, the lifter up of my head. Truly thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me. My glory, you're the lifter up of my head. Only you, O oh Lord, had a shield for me. My glory, the lifter up of my head. Sena ma sena ma na 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 na. What a shield for me. My glory, the lifter up of my head.
Are you ready to pray? Say in the name of Jesus. I declare the grace, the unction for the next level of my life and my destiny. Spiritually, financially, career-wise, I obtain that grace right now. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Take grace, take grace. He said to come boldly before the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Comforter, make my life comfortable. Teacher, teach me all I need to know. You are the Spirit of God. I feel your touch in my life. Holy Ghost You're going to play one last prayer Listen to me One last prayer The spirit of lukewarmness On fire today down tomorrow The spirit of complacency The spirit of conformity I have to be like the rest. You are going to pray and say, Father, fresh fire on my altar. The fellowship I used to have with you that I no longer enjoy. Oh, let there be a restoration, oh God. A restoration of hunger. A restoration of passion. Lift your voice and pray. You are... The covenant keeping God. Keep praying. You are covenant keeping God. Now covenant keeping God. You are you. The covenant keeping God Yahweh The staying power in prayer The staying power in fastings The staying power in your pursuit Shalena Taska de la Copra Haskadia Rahaskida. Hallelujah. Now, listen, everybody. Listen. I have just two or three minutes and we're done. You finish praying. Now, I'm going to raise a chant in the spirit. You just listen to me. While I am praying, I'm ministering to you by the spirit. There will be an infusion of grace and strength upon your inner man. We tread the mysteries of the kingdom. Hey, 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 h
Journey ahead. Ah, 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 ah. Ah, 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 ah. Grace to say no to every appearance of evil. Ah, ah, ah. Faithful is the Lamb, mighty, mighty is the Lamb. Oh, oh. Yeah. The grace that helps men to finish strong. Just a minute or two and we're done. There are many of you, the Holy Ghost is speaking to you. Calling you back to the place of intimacy. This was a sound that I had in the realm of the spirit. One day whilst ministering. These are songs of the spirit. They were not songs that were written. God is right.